and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people, which is impossible. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Can you just hold that for me? Just hold it. Six times during the past 300 years, 300 years, they have asserted it in arms, standing on that fundamental right and again inserting it in arms in face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Rep Irish Republic as sovereign, independent That's state. Right. And we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare, and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and woman. Listen to that, Mr. Varadkar. And Mr. Martin. And Sinn Féin. And the, and the abominable Greens. Me on Martin. The Republic guarantees. Street across the great river, river of Liffey of Dublin, and that great patriot which Gemma has pointed out so many times, Daniel O'Connell. No. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberties, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens, and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally, and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government, which have div div divided a minority from the minor majority in the past. Yeah. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government representative of the whole people of Ireland uh, and elected by the suffrage of all her men and women and remember that Ireland was, I think, the first country in 1922 that gave full voting rights to women. That's what the Irish people did, and we didn't need the EUC or any of those pretenders to tell that's where their rights came from. They came from the Irish papers who got all our freedom, men and women. The provisional government, hereby constituted, will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. The final paragraph. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms, and we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonor it by cowardice, inhumanity, or rapine. In this supreme hour, and what hour is more supreme now, when the total extinguishment of this great republic is threatened by the cabal. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valour and discipline, and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it has been called. This great document, ranking with all the great documents, as Gemma has said many times, around the world, was signed on behalf of the provisional government. And the first signatory on that document was Thomas J. Clark. Thomas J. Clark, I think he had a little shock down here in Cornell Street when he was released from prison after serving 20 years. Now, my history's a bit gone on me. 
Ireland. Thomas Clark struck for Ireland when he thought was right. And he was given 20 years. I know I should read the proclamation. I continue. He was given 20 years in prison under what was called the special regime to be broken. 20 men were in with them. Only eight came out alive and sane. And he survived. He wrote the Bible back backwards twice on little pieces of paper. That's what he did to keep his sanity. So there you are. What a man. What a patriot. Right. Thomas J. Clark. Sean McDermott. Thomas McDonough. Porrick P. H. Pierce. Porrick Pierce. Eamon Kant. James Connolly. Oh, Joseph Puckett. Thank you, fellow patriots. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, there is another protest.